Good day everyone! We are here to represent the beauty of the Iloilo City's different arts and cultures. Iloilo City is well known for its beauty and busy streets. But as its economy continues to grow, so its culture for arts. Ilongos are known for their loving and caring personality, but people who have visited Iloilo City can't deny the Ilongos talent and rich culture when it comes to art. From digital arts to paintings, artifacts to handcrafts, and architecture to street arts, Iloilo City have it all. The Dinagang Festival is a famous religious and cultural festival in Iloilo City. Philippines held annually on the fourth Sunday of January or right after the Sinulog in Cebu and Ati Atian Festival in Calibu Aklan. Dinagyang is one of the biggest and world-class festival in the Philippines, attracting more than a million domestic and international visitors every year. It is the only festival in the Philippines that was awarded by the Association of Tourism Officers in the Philippines as the best tourism event for three consecutive years in 2006, 2007, and 2008. It is also the most awarded festival in the country with both national and international awards because of its legacy, popularity, and innovation. Dinagyang received honors and was regarded as the world-class festival and was dubbed as the Queen of All Philippines Festivals. Now, let's go to the largest district in Iloilo City called Haro. In the year 1940, Haro was relegated to Iloilo City and became one of its districts. It was once the place to biggest market that sell excellent and famous products in the 90s like fabrics, necessaries items, and worthwhile products. It also has a rich history that up until now remain and one of it is the Haro Cathedral or also known as the National Shrine of Our Lady of the Candles. There was once a myth that was told me by my grandparents about the history of the Lady of the Candles. It was late at night and at that time there were many victims of execution and war. Many prayed for the souls and peace. Later that evening, a lady was walking home when she saw a lady so bright holding a candle walking in that very place. I was told it was the very lady of the candles. It may be a myth of not but the story brought a very sentimental feeling to me. A assurance that hope will come in such dark times. However, miracles do exist. In an article made by Pinatakasi that is all about the origin of Nuestra Señora de Calendaria, it was told that the statue of Our Lady of Candles came from Iloilo River where some fishermen found it floating in the year 1587. The fishermen said that when they first carried the statue, it was very heavy, but as they decided to take it to Haro, it became easier the closer they get. If you visit the Haro Cathedral, today you might see a small niche just above the present niche. It was said that it was original size of the present statue, and over the years, it became larger and were unable to fit on the small niche and was therefore another niche was made. The Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art, Elumocas, is an art museum in Iloilo City, Philippines. It is the first museum in the Visayas and Mindanao dedicated to modern and contemporary art and the first museum in the Visayas exclusively dedicated to Ilongo visual artists. 
It houses the largest collections of art in the Visayas. The museum is likewise the first mega world built museum in the Philippines. Plain colored bridge stretching Iloilo River in Mandorial District, also known as Binigno Aquino Jr. Avenue Bridge, underwent a colorful transformation on Friday, adding another vibrant attraction to Iloilo City. Members of Hubon, Ilongo, and Arau Visual Artists Collective of Dumangas added color to the plain colored railings of the Binigno Aquino Jr. Avenue or Diversion Bridge. According to Mayor Jerry Chernias, the transformation was inspired by the colorful Alcove Bridge in Singapore which was the work of Filipino artist Pasita Abad. The mayor said several vacant walls and another bridge in the city will also be transformed into vibrant art scenes as the city continues to promote street and public arts. Museo Iloilo Located along Bonifacio Drive in Iloilo City proper, is the first government-sponsored museum outside Metro Manila. The museum building was designed by Ilonggo architect Sergio Pinasales. The museum houses an impressive collection of Iloilo's cultural heritage which includes Stone Age native pottery, fossils jewelry, burial sites, trade pottery from China, Anam and Siam, era photos, mementos and war relics, a British sunken ship, Spanish era Filipino sculpture, and modern art done by Ilongo artists and craftsmen. Museo Iloilo's permanent exhibit covers the cultural history of Western Visayas from prehistory to contemporary history. Inside is the carbon-dated fossils, the swords and spears of the Mondo tribe of Panay, and the permanent exhibit showing an Ati family. Plaza Libertad is where the flag of the First Philippine Republic was raised in triumph after Spain surrendered Iloilo. Her last capital in the islands to the revolutionaries led by General Martin Delgado on December 25, 1898. The plaza is in J.M. Basa de la Rama, Zamora Street, downtown Iloilo City. It is bounded on one side by the San Jose Church, by the Iloilo City Hall on another, and some historical buildings like the Masonic Temple and a building now occupied by Land Bank which used to be Hotel de Iloilo. Plaza Libertad is downtown Iloilo's plaza. It used to be the center of activity of the whole city of Iloilo during its heyday. The place where the Ilongos of the past leisurely spent their afternoon in the entertainment of live bands. Iloilo, a cultural and heritage landmark. This was how the National Museum of the Philippines described the redeveloped Iloilo Provincial Capital Complex. What has been realized is a complex that will be the pride of all Ilongos, promoting its history and beauty as it continues to serve as the seat of government for the province. According to National Museum of the Philippines, Director Jeremy Barnes, in a message read by the Chief of the Western Visayas Regional Museum, Honey Beso. The aftermath of rehabilitation that started during the administration of former Governor Arthur Defensor Sr., the Iloilo Provincial Capital Complex was finally opened to the public on December 2. Inclement weather due to Typhoon Tisoy prevented Barnes from grazing it. The capital complex is now a cultural and heritage landmark and a place of education and leisure all for the benefit of the public and visitors from all around the world. Weaving is one of the most ancient crops in Iloilo. It has been a part of the Ilongo culture that has survived for thousands of years. 
textiles were an important commodity as well as symbol in many regions of pre-Hispanic Philippines. Dresses using handloom, fabric suggested class, and gender identity. Every region or ethnic group at the time of the conquest was said to have its own style of dress and its own fabric. Weaving took its back seat for some times because most people are not willing to pay for handwoven cloth when an expensive machine-made fabric become readily available in the market. The quality of their work was good, but the market was too small to support many of them. Weavers made innovations by combining natural fibrous materials with man-made fibers introduced in the early 1920s and started to produce colorful textiles that become to be known as habloon. This fabric has evolved to become a major player in the Philippine textile industry with its heyday in 1950s up to 1970s. However, it again suffered a decline in 1980s due to the predominance in the world market of less labor-intensive machine-woven textiles. This also brought about a dramatic decline in the number of weavers who started to look for better livelihood opportunities and lack of interest among younger generation to take up this weaving trade. Today, there has been a revival of the weaving traditions thanks in large part to government agencies and concerned cultural workers in Iliilo that have made it viable to keep the tradition alive. Efforts are being made to keep it alive for future generations. The hablon fabric has emerged into a versatile and unique textile, currently making waves in the Philippine and international Houthi culture. It also shows great potential in the global market for textiles, next to the old-time favorite piña and jersey. Hablon has caught the attention of fashion designers who have developed a distinct culture out of it and has made its way into several fashion houses in the United States. Singapore, Hong Kong, and the United Kingdom. Many women now continue to web in the town of Miegao, Oton, Bajangan, Igbaras, and Duenas. Many are also involved in the production of our local fabrics such as dyeing and hand spinning fibers, particularly under the workshop model. The fabric were woven on portable looms, which limited the size of the fabric as well as the tightness of its weave. Spinning the thread before placing it inside the shuttle ready for weaving, weavers from Selngan and Otan, Poto by Bombet Jimarin, weavers labor and cooperative workshops for around 8 to 10 hours daily, while others work in their homes to alternate their weaving with their domestic course. As the men walk kilometers to their fields, women stay home to raise their babies and weave. They are not paid at an hourly wage, but rather to the completed fabric sold per meter in the local market. With the rise of popular tourism in Iloilo and its surrounding municipalities, women now use their weaving as a way to provide for their families.